We are going to start into lesson 8.1, which talks about geometric mean. Um, chapter 8 it has a lot to do with Pythagorean theorem, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we will also use sine, cosine, and tangent, which are our trig functions. So um, the geometric mean is for any positive number, a and b, the positive number x, such that a over x equals x over b. So very similar to what we did last chapter, we're going to cross multiply. We get x squared equals a times b. So we need to take the square root um, and get what x would be, which would be our geometric mean. <coughs> So you've heard the word mean before in arithmetic mean, which is using the average. So I'm going to add two numbers together, divide it by two, add five numbers together, divide it by five. The geometric mean, because we are multiplying, instead of dividing, which is what you do here, we are going to have to take the square root of our numbers. So um, since we are going to have to take the square root, let's go over some of our perfect squares. Just remember, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 9 is 3, 25, 36, 49. And I'm just giving these to you because you might have to simplify a radical. And depending on how you simplify it, you'll need to remember your perfect squares. So our first example, I need to find the geometric mean between 50 and 2. So my geometric mean always goes on the bottom of the first and the top of the second. So I'm trying to find that number that's the geometric mean, so I'm going to put 50, the two numbers that they give me, on the other two parts. I'm going to cross multiply so I get x squared equals 100. When I square root that, because that's the only way I can get rid of a square, my x is 10. So the geometric mean of these two numbers is 10. So go ahead and stop this video and try your next checkpoint. Here is your answer to it. Remember, finding that geometric mean, bottom of the first, top of the second. All right, we're going to skip identifying triangles, and we're going to go down here to right triangle geometric mean. So the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of our right triangle. So we have our right triangle, ABC. So that is our right triangle. And we have an altitude, CD, that is drawn which separates the hypotenuse into two segments. So those two segments are AD and DD. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean. So I'm going to go on the top of the first, or the bottom of the first, top of the second. So my geometric mean CD, which is my altitude, top, uh, bottom of the first, top of the second, between the lengths of those two segments. So I'm going to say AD is one of those segments I can use, and then DB would be the other segment I'm going to use. So again, my geometric mean will be the altitude that I have seen in my triangle, which is the going to represent that geometric mean. The same numbers or the same variable should go in those two spots. So again, the a part of my hypotenuse over my altitude equals my altitude over the part of my other hypotenuse. So this is if we're trying to find or we have the altitude. This is our proportion we are going to set up. All right, so let's try one. In my picture, KM would represent my altitude. My hypotenuse of the entire triangle. So here is my right triangle. So KJL. 
will be my whole hypotenuse. Some people get mixed up with, um, because I have a right angle here, they think that that's my hypotenuse. Do not let that confuse you. That altitude is just pertaining to the whole right triangle that you have, J, K, L. So just remember that. All right, so because I have my altitude, I know that my altitude needs to go on the bottom of the first, top of the second. So I'm going to say KM goes there, and KM also goes there. And remember, I'm going to look back up here to the part of my hypotenuse and then the other part of my hypotenuse. So I would say JM is one part and ml is the other part remember that uh, that altitude cuts it in half so i'm going to just fill in the blank so 6 over e equals e over 24. i'm going to cross multiply e squared equals 144. when i square root my altitude's length now becomes 12. All right, so remember that is if I have the altitude or I need to find the altitude. What if I'm given the leg of my triangle? So remember, we're not looking at the little baby triangles. We're looking at the big triangle, A, B, C. And here is my right angle. So my legs of this triangle would be A, C or CB. So again, I don't have anything to do with that altitude right now. So the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse into two segments. That's the same thing we just talked about. The length of the leg of the triangle is the geometric mean. So let's use um, CA. So my geometric mean, remember, goes on the bottom of the first, top of the second. Between the length of the hypotenuse, length of the hypotenuse, so the length of the hypotenuse would be AB, and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So the segment adjacent to the leg that I just looked at is the part that it touches, so I would say AD. So let's erase all this. So if I was looking at um, my leg AC or CA, I would use the entire length of my hypotenuse and the part that it touches of the hypotenuse. All right, well, I do have another leg, so let's erase that. I have leg CB that I could also set up a proportion. So CB would be my geometric mean. I need the whole length of the hypotenuse, so AB, that's going to stay the same. <coughs> but the length or the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg, so since I use this leg, I also need this segment, DB. All right, so in words, your whole hypotenuse over the leg equals the leg over the part of that hypotenuse touching the leg. So that's, I think that's one of the most important parts sometimes people get confused with. Make sure the part of the hypotenuse that it's touching you are using. So that again is if you are using the legs of your right triangle. All right, let's try a few. KL would be considered a leg. My hypotenuse is going to be JL, and the part that is touching my leg is going to be ML. So following what we had up top, remember my leg goes in the geometric mean, KL. My whole hypotenuse, which is JL, and then my part that touches it is going to go over here. So JL is actually 30, so I need to say 30 over C equals C over 24. Cross multiply, C squared equals 720. 
I need the square root, so C equals 26.8. Right, what if I need to find the other legs? So I'm asked to find J or KJ. So KJ is a leg. <coughs> Km would be my altitude, my hypotenuse would be JL, and the part that touches my leg, the hypotenuse that touches my leg would be JM. Since I'm finding a leg, I do not need my altitude. All right, so let's set it up. So I'm going to say my altitude or my leg is going to be D and D. That is my leg. My whole entire hypotenuse, JL, which we said is 30. And the part that touches my leg is going to be 6. So cross multiply, D squared equals 180. So the other leg without using the Pythagorean theorem is going to be 13.4. All right, go ahead and stop your video and try your checkpoint. Here is your answer, and on to the last page. Mrs. Adams is constructing a kite for her son, Palmer. She has arranged two support rods so that they are perpendicular. The short rod is 27 inches. If she had to place the short rod... 7.25 inches from one end of the long rod in order to form two right triangles with the kite fabric. What is the length of the long rod? So I need to find this length. So even though we have a kite, we can actually set up a right triangle. Very similar to what we've been working with today. So that's my right triangle. This part of the rod right here is actually going to be considered my altitude. So um, in this part, they have given us is 7.25. Well, I know because it's a kite that what my short diagonal actually is bisected. So I do know that this length is 13.5, not 2.5. All right, so because I have an altitude, remember, I can set up my proportion with my altitude. What if I represent this as x? So I'm going to say um, 7.25, part of my altitude over my altitude, equals my altitude over the remaining portion. Because I need to find the entire length, I can add together the one I find to the one they give me. So I'm going to cross multiply 7.25x equals 182.25. So that part of my rod is 25.14. So I have 7.25 inches there. I found 25.14 inches here, so my entire rod, using the um, geometric mean of my altitude, is 32.39 inches. All right, well, that um, is it for our video today. Um, remember those two proportions, how you set them up correctly, and you should be fine.